Do online meetings make you sleepy, grumpy, cause headaches or nausea? You may be suffering from Zoom fatigue. The medicine you need is J Man Speaks. Let's go! This is Jeremiah's J Man Manero with J Man Speak. J Man to the rescue! There's no sleeping in this Zoom. Edutainment. High energy. Yahoo! Wake up. Wake up. Your head's gonna explode. Ooh. Yeah! Ah! Refreshingly authentic. Come with me if you want to live. Side effects will include extreme joy or euphoria, enhanced learning, increased energy and motivation, and feelings of invincibility. Oh, shoot. Okay. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. I just realized that my microphone was turned off. So welcome to Ask the Experts, Anything Meaningful Friday. Uh, I see that we do have people who are watching live. So if you could post in the comments where you're from, you know, area that you service, that kind of stuff. If you're in real estate or any other industry, that's fine. Uh, but we're Ask the Experts, Anything Meaningful Friday. So please post your comments, uh, post your questions in the comments. We have three things that we wanted to talk about today. Uh, three specific things, and it's three things that you, you or three different conversations or ways, topics to have conversations with your existing clients or strangers or prospects or customers uh, in regards to real estate. So the first one's going to be the COVID-19 relief package. Uh, not the one that was passed a while ago, but the one that was passed in December. There's actually some real estate related. Hey, we got Jeffrey Stanton here from the NYC. What up, Jeff? Um, that's interesting. There we go. Add, add Jeff there. Uh, the one that was passed in December has some things related to real estate, in particular for those landlords who are having uh, some issues with tenants not paying, right? So, uh, the first thing I would do is reach out to your existing database, right? People who you've sold houses to or people that may know you when you call. Uh, we understand that if you're in New York State, you're in a state of emergency, um, we can't cold call. So you can call your existing clients. I understand that some of us are so used to cold calling. We're like, what do we do? We can't cold call. Here's an idea. Call your clients, your existing clients who haven't heard from you. And so the first thing I would do is reach out and say, ring, ring, ring. Hey, how you doing? This is Jeremiah. Jay Man Manero with the Manero team at XYZ Realty. Look at, I just call in to see how you guys are doing. You know, 2020 was a challenging year for many of us. Uh, you know, how are you? How are the kids? How's the house? Start out the conversation like that. Okay, I'm never going to start out a conversation with business saying, do you know anybody that's looking to buy or sell real estate? Please give us a call today. Now nah, I'm going to call. Uh, you should always use the Ford concept of conversation, conversation starters. Uh, the Ford concept is, it's an acronym for four different things. Four, Ford, F is family, right? Oh, so how are you? How are the kids? Man, are they going to school? Are you still homeschooling? I'm so happy that my kids are going to school because there's one thing that I did discover, and that's I can never, ever be a teacher. I'm so thankful for our teachers out there. Second one is occupation. Oh, F-O-R-D, right? Second one's occupation. Oh, how are things at work? Everything's good. You didn't get furloughed or laid off or anything like that. Well, that's fantastic. I'm glad to hear that. Glad to hear that. And then R would be recreation. And so like, so what are you guys doing? I mean, this whole year during the pandemic, did you guys stay in? Did you go to parks? Uh, like, what's the first exciting thing you plan to do once we really get opened up? Do you have any trips planned? And then the last one is D for dreams. I'm not going to ask you, hey, what are your dreams? But I would say, hey, you know, my wife and I were talking. We really want to go to someplace nice once it's like able to, you know, you can travel freely and everybody's got the shots and the, 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 all that stuff. And start the conversation like that. And then I would, I would transition, find a good spot to transition. Don't ask like one sentence. Have a meaningful conversation in the beginning, you know, just, just shooting the breeze. And then say, um, hey, Teresa from Austin, Texas. Uh, you know, shoot the breeze and then say, hey, have you heard about the new uh, COVID-19 relief package that was just passed in December? And I'm going to bring it up on screen here so you guys can have a visual of what I'm talking about. I'm going to bring it over here. Let's see. Whoop, not that one. Let's see this here. That was my belt. 
uh, wrong camera. So with this here, uh, I went, and this is on NAR.realtor. If, if you're not familiar, you can go to NAR.realtor and they have a news section, news, events, breaking news, anything like that. So this is where I found the COVID-19 relief package includes help for business and property owners. So if your client owns a business, right here we have, uh, do, 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 provides an additional 284 billion, and let me probably see if I can make this a little bigger for you. There we go. A little smaller now. Okay. So you can see here it provides an additional 284 billion for paycheck protection program loans and 20 billion for economic injury disaster loans grants, right? Some of those are, are forgivable. They don't have to pay them back. Uh, unemployment assistance, you could see here, if I step to the side, uh, unemployment assistance is also extended through April 19th, 2021 with a $300 weekly boost in payments. Uh, I would not expect anything when it comes to unemployment to be automatic. So again, if they, if the conversation goes there and they say, oh, well, we lost our job, we're collecting unemployment now. Well, did you know the new, you know, maybe they don't know because we want to be the bringers of information and the source of sources. So then if, if you continue on, let me scroll, let's scroll up a little bit. Doo, 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 doo. Uh, this one right here provides 25 billion to the states to the states through September 30th, 2022 for rental assistance and allows landlords to apply for funds on behalf of tenants. Right? Some tenants may have lost their jobs and said, Hey babies, COVID, I don't care, I'm not paying you nothing. Well, this gives an opportunity for the landlord to try to get caught up. Uh, because, you know, we know that the eviction and the foreclosure moratorium was extended till I believe it's the end of March, March 31st of 2021. But look at if I'm a land, I am a landlord, right? We own six or seven units. It's hard to keep track. My wife keeps track of that stuff. We're fortunate that our tenants, you know, paid and everything was fine. Uh, but had, you know, multiple of them, like we still have mortgages on these properties. So we like to keep our credit A plus, and we would be having to pay all these mortgages if they decided not to pay. And so a program like this could help me help us get back into the black, help them get caught up. And then just think from, you know, if you're a landlord and you help your tenant get caught up on rent, what kind of social capital, I love to use that word, the social capital that builds with the tenant landlord relationship rather than you saying yo we're going to kick you out you better get caught up we're going to kick you out you say look at uh there's a great program i'm going to apply for it to help you get back on track you've been a great tenant in the past i understand you know that, that you're going through hard times so all of this is is really a great opportunity just to have a conversation right because I, I think one of the big things that we struggle with as as agents i'm gonna go back over to here one of the things we struggle with as agents is like we call our clients. What do we talk about? What should we talk about? And if you can always call them with like, hey, here's something that can help you. Here's something else that can help you. Here's something else that can help you. All right. Great talking to you. Have a great day. Right. I'm not calling to say, hey, who do you know that wants to buy or sell, you know, pulling a do I have a business card in my pocket. Of course I do. You know, pulling a business card. Who, do you know, that's looking to buy or sell real estate Man, don't be the cliched salesperson be the real estate expert that's calling to help them in their, in their greatest, you know, time of need, be the resource. All right. So th the second thing that, I mean, you could, there's a million different ways you could do that. You could do a video like I'm doing, but talking about the COVID-19 relief package with the talking points that I just discussed, you could do a social media post with the talking points that I just, uh, you know, who do you know that has rental property? Uh, who do you know that's looking to invest in real estate, et cetera. Here's some resources for them. Uh, I would go one step further. We have this in our messenger bot, and then you can use a keyword to get them to auto reply uh, for the resources. You don't know what a messenger bot is? Send us a message. You're on this page. J Man speaks right now. Send the message bot nerd, two words, bot nerd. That's it. Keyword bot nerd. You'll get the demo um, as well as a 45 minute. Uh, webinar all about it so you can learn all about okay second thing we want to talk about if you tuned in last week uh, we talked about 
the market update. You know, how to, how to, where to get your statistics, how to interpret that, and then how to create content around it that your clients will go, whoa, the market's awesome, if they've been hiding in a cave or something, but giving specifics about how awesome the market is. Um, if you didn't see that, that's on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can go check that out. But let me, I'm gonna go back over to statistics because, one second, folks, change my screen, here we go. So here, this is my local board, the Greater Rochester Association of Realtors, but all of the boards at this point should have a year-end market statistics or an annual report. Uh, if you don't have it, you can go to NYSAR.com, go to your state your state um, real estate board, Texas, I'm sure, has it, Teresa. Um, Nicole, you want to, <laughs> it's Botner, B-O-T-N-E-R-D. You want to put that, uh, send us a message, not, not type it in the comments. Uh, and, and that'll get you the information. So if I come in here and I have the year-end statistics, I'm gonna do a separate video on the statistics, right? But if I'm calling to have a conversation, I want these statistics handy. I want it printed out. I don't like printing a lot of things when it comes to referencing very specific statistics on the market. I never wanna misspeak. And so this is where I might go, oh, you know what? Did you know that Monroe County the homes for sale, and I never, I never like to use the word inventory, but the homes for sale is down 38.6%. Let me see what our numbers are here. Hold on. So new listings in 2020 is down 10.9% for my market. Okay, closed sales is actually down 4.9%. So explain that to them. Say, hey, did you know? have you heard about the market? Oh, I heard the market's on fire. Well, it is, but it isn't. Okay, what's happening is, we actually have less homes on the market, okay? We're selling a higher percentage of those homes, okay? Which, which means there's less, you know, less houses available for sale. But as a whole, the market has gone down. The reason being is that we don't have enough houses to sell. You know, so if, and, and I never like to go to them directly, I would say, so if you know anybody that's thinking about selling or, you know, wants to know what their home is worth, we can help them, okay? We have an opportunity, we can give them a home equity estimate, okay? And they go, home equity estimate, what's that? Again, we have a flow within our, our messenger bot or you could old fashioned take the information, but I like giving people ways to do it anonymously without talking to me because that's the reason why, you know, big tech companies that rhyme with pillow became so popular because they were able to give an anonymous depiction of value without ever having to talk to the consumer. And you're like, well, it's not accurate. They don't care, they wanna range. And so I would say, hey, if you've ever done a home equity estimate, look, when we hop off the phone, I'll send you a link and I'll post a link to our uh, home equity estimate flow in our bot. I'll post it in the comments when this is all done. But we have this home equity estimate evaluator, uh, whatever you wanna call it. You click the link, you answer a few questions and we can give you or whoever is asking uh, a range, you know, plus or minus 10%, we'd have to come out to, to, to make it a little bit more accurate. But if you're just looking for a range and you're wondering what your home is worth in this current market, then we can do that for you without ever having to talk to us again, okay? <laughs> if you have specific questions on like, you know, we're getting into the tax season, I, I, I might say, uh, you know, what kind of upgrades you're looking to make? Um, that might be part of the original conversation too. What, you know, since you've been closing your house for nine months, what are some of the things you realize that you want to change? And if you're looking to, to do some improvements, uh, I can help you with that as well. We have great people that we work for or work with, uh, great vendors, construction, et cetera. Uh, we'd be happy to refer you to great people and help you make the right selections because someday you're going to call me to sell that home and I want to make sure that you do everything right. I am an expert in real estate and I can give you my expert uh, advice. All right, so as we go down through here, we look at median sale price. Okay, um, and then average sale price, explaining the difference between those two. But let's look at average sale price, okay? And I'm in Rochester, New York. We're a mid-sized market, roughly a million people. We have, I guess I'm gonna make this a little bigger too. So you guys can see that. There we go. So uh, our average sale price is up 10.8%. We rarely, historically, have ever seen double digits. Okay, double digits mean 10 and above. 
So what does that mean? Look at the difference, and this is what I like to compare between 2019 and 2020. What that means is you can net, meaning on the sale of your home, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, or potential prospect, you can net twice as much, right? So insert whatever your average sale price is. If your average sale price, I'm going to just say 200 for this example. On a $200,000 home in 2019, you the, the price appreciated you know, $10,000. In 2020, on that same $200,000 home, it appreciated $20,000. So we're talking about a $10,000 change. Uh, in and, and the higher your average sale price, the bigger that number is going to be. Right? I, I use percentages, but then I'll convert it to dollars because dollars make sense. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you tell them, this is you could net ten thousand more dollars by selling in this market. It's crazy, and it's only going up. However, if you love where you live and you want to stay there, uh, it, it might also be a good time for you to refi. Well, like refi. Well, why wouldn't why would a real estate salesperson be calling me to refinance my home? Because I'm here to help, right? So if, if you have some equity in the home after we do our home equity estimate. Um, part of that flow is that we can introduce you to uh, loan officers or people that can help you with the refinancing. And what you can do with that refi, you can do what's called a cash out refi, right? Where if you owe 100 on your home and I feel like it might be worth 200, you pull out an extra 60 to 80 thousand dollars, depending on the loan to value, and do whatever you want with it. Take that dream vacation that we just talked about. Okay, take the kids to wherever you should because look at life is short. We know that from 2020. So let, let's take them on a vacation or add that addition or buy some investment property. Okay, and that's where I would transition to, you know, there are some great opportunities in the market with all the changes in rental properties and how landlords can do things and the eviction moratorium. I know that we have a great number of landlords that are cashing out that are saying, all right, I have a package of 10, 15, 20 properties. I want to get rid of them. Okay. And there's opportunity, you know, there's an opportunity there for you to pick up one or two. You know, if, if you took that $50,000, for example, you could use that to buy three, two, maybe three rental properties in the Rochester, New York area, right? If we sell rental properties in, in, in the city proper for $50,000, you have 20% down, that's 10 grand plus closing costs, that's 15. You could probably buy uh, three of them. Okay, now you have cash positive uh, rental income, which we would call wake up money. You know what I'm saying? So if you get uh, 30 years from now or 20 years from now, 15 years from now, you're looking to retire, these properties are paid off and you have you know something that can supplement your pension, your, your social security, whatever the case may be, we can help you, okay? Or maybe you want to buy a vacation rental. And that's where I would go into, you know, through our network and through our network of people, I know people all over the world. So I, I just hooked up with somebody in Costa Rica because my cousin moved there. And uh, so it's like we know where those hidden gems, people like to know like exclusive stuff, right? We know where those hidden gems are of uh, the next best spot. Hold on, let me just go back to our regular screen. We know where those hidden gems are, you know, Costa Rica. Um, maybe you're thinking about Charlotte. We have connections in Charlotte. Maybe you're looking at Austin, Texas, right? We got Nicole on, or uh, Teresa on here. I don't know where Nicole's from. Uh, wherever you are, we can, can find somebody for you. If you're looking to buy in the Caribbean, I have connections in Puerto Rico, in the Dominican Republic, uh, Mexico. While mm, you might find a great deal there, it may be not worth the risk depending on, you know, what you're thinking about. Uh, we have experience with you know, vacation, uh, second home properties, but also vacation rentals, because that's the other part of it. Uh, there's areas in our um, area that we service in the greater Rochester area, which is like an 11 county area. We have a lot of waterfront properties. Vacation rentals are an option. You could purchase something, uh, whether it's a, a campground, a cabin in the woods, a waterfront property, and you could have that for your family to enjoy, but you could also rent that so that it pays for itself. I mean, think of a place that you can go with your kids and your family and just have the best time and you're not paying for it because 
you have everything lined up and everything's paying for it. So those are my three topics I believe I wanted to talk about today. Let me see what else I got here. Oh, the, and then the third thing. I guess I'm not counting how many things. I'm giving you a lot of nuggets here. But the, uh, the last thing I want to talk about, I, I feel like the reason why people aren't putting their house in the market is confidence, right? Consumer confidence, seller confidence is down. Can I really put my house in the market safely, right? And not have any issues. So you might want to talk to them and say, hey, you know, have you heard about our safer selling system or uh, sell your home guarantee? Meaning, you know, uh, what we've, we've talked to sellers and what the sellers have told us is that they know that their home will sell. They, they know that they're going to make a lot of money on that home when it, or more money than they would have in the past when it sells. However, they don't know where they're going to go. And so if you can come up with something to make them feel safe in a way where you're guaranteeing like, hey, if we get an offer in this market, I can negotiate an extended closing period, right? If, if your area is 60 days, um, maybe it's 90, maybe it's 120, whatever it is. I can negotiate an extended closing period and or we can put a contingency in there on contingent on seller finding suitable housing within 30 days. And if you don't find a home, guess what? We don't have to sell the house. Okay, but what I can tell you is 100% of the sellers that I work with have found a home. Okay, because when you think about real estate, think about the, the Monero team where your architects for the American dream. Okay. That's it, folks. Uh, if you got any questions, please post them in the comments. Um, Nicole, oh, Northern Virginia. Okay, let me add you to the broadcast. We got Virginia represented. We got Texas. And we got NYC in the house. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Thank you for tuning in. And again, if you have any ideas or, or topics that you want us to talk about, uh, we only want to bring you straight value. Like I want to come on here and talk just, just for the heck of it. Uh, I want you to say, hey, I listened to you. I did what you said, and it helped my business, and it helped my life. Right? That's what we're here for. Uh, it's Jeremiah's J-Man Monero with the Monero team, and J-Man Speaks. It's 18 Friday. Bum, ba -dum, bum. Thanks for tuning in, folks. We'll see you next Friday, 9 a.m. Oh, that's a good one, Teresa.